Hello and welcome to another webinar of Contender. The topic of our webinar today will be Boost your BIM workflows with OpenAPI standards. I'm your host, Wolfgang Fritz. First, a short summary. What is an API? API means Application Programming Interface. And it can be summed up that the API is an interface to any backend so that I have a predictive behavior towards it. Whenever I'm calling for a particular method, I'm getting the same result without the need to know which kind of services are working in the backend. Therefore, I can say the API is an interface towards the backend for my application without the need to know what is going on there. As users, we also have interfaces. We call them websites or applications where we do interact with them. Same can be said for other softwares. They need an interface to interact with the backend and to interact with each other. Now I want to talk a little bit about the different ways that we provide to use our API. First off, there are applications which are based on the data provided by you in Hub. That can be interesting for a Hub client when he has a particular use case that is not provided by Catender Hub or wants integration to a system that we currently don't have integration yet towards. The second way that we provide our access to our API is the product Boost. Boost lets you use parts of our engine as white labeled within your own software. For example, you want to use the BCF server or the viewer for 2D and 3D of IFCs. You can use parts of our service and run it in your own application. Let's have a little bit of a deeper dive into that. Coming to the first example, you are an existing client of Catender Hub and your data is produced and hosted within that system. But for a particular use case, you want to have a new application, grabbing that data, modifying or just viewing it. This is what we call a Catenda Hub based application, as it allows you access to all the information that is currently on your Catender Hub account. When you're using Boost, you're using parts of our service within your service. So access rights and controls to your client are not within our hands and you will have to provide this from your backend towards our API. Now let's have a look into what you actually can address via our API. Currently, you could use the components of the 3D and 2D viewer for IFC, the BCF services for the version 2.0 up to 3.0 and our CDE API. This is also the structure in our API documentation where you find our methods for the 3D and 2D viewer, the BCF versions for the different API calls and what is called REST API v2, the main part of the CDE API. Wherever possible, we try to supply we with code snippets and assumable results, as well as some documentation next to the code snippets themselves. Now let's have a look at one of the Boost products which is out there. This particular example is interesting as it uses all parts of our API, the BCF, the 2D and 3D viewer, and as well the CDE or REST API v2. This particular application has its focus on the interoperability between maintenance and asset management. So its particular use case it cannot be fulfilled by Hub. Therefore, this application has its own backend and makes it available to connect IoT devices towards our viewer. Here you can see the quite similar behavior of the viewer that you may know from Catender Hub as well as some modification when it comes down of creating new clipping planes, although the base functionality stays the same. And there is also quite a changed interface when it comes down to the, the BCF issue management, which is embedded in the identities panel here in that particular application. Also here you can see a little bit of a different approach towards the documents and the way how issues or topics are displayed. 
although additional data gets stored within those topics in the backend of that particular application, it is still a totally standard conform BCF that you could export from here towards any other system or directly call the API for that particular object and method. If you're interested now in our product boost, feel free to reach out to us and look on our website for a demo. Also here you find another two success stories about clients who implemented Boost. Of course we cannot talk about all of them as some of them may have similar approaches as Hub and therefore don't like to be associated with our product. So far we haven't talked about open standards or the open standards that we fulfill within our application and why this is a benefit for especially you as a developer or your clients. Not too many people are aware of that there is an open CDE standard for APIs by Building Smart. This is also one of the points why I want to talk about it. Coming from the building industry, we all know how important standards are. From I-beams down to screws, there is a good reason why we have them. The same can be said for the software industry. There is a good reason why there is a, are a lot of standards, for example, the open API standard or other standards that define libraries and their usage. So at a certain point, Building Smart did the obvious and started to create open standards around the APIs as well. These help interoperability between softwares for clients, meaning the communication between two softwares gets standardized in a way that developers can rely that the same method or the way to call the same method is the same within two suppliers for APIs. Of course, someone could see a potential threat to the business in this, but we do think that this is the only way forward, as interoperability is the main key if you want to have an open way communicating in the open BIM standards. So what does the open CDE or foundation standard API standard currently cover? The foundation currently mainly focuses on the authentication around uh, the users and the method how to do it. But if you look further into, for example, the BCF standard for APIs, it gives you a lot of uh, really good methods that you can expect from a certain API to deliver it to you. This means as a software developer, you have an expected behavior from each and every API that follows this particular standard. And as well, you get the same results from them. First, that may seem very trivial, but if you think about that, you want to integrate to multiple BCF systems or BCF services, for example, or services that use BCF, you can use always same methods with different URLs or URIs where you want to redirect them and have a lot of time saved while doing your development. This, on the other hand, gives the users way more integration to multiple systems. Meaning, if it's easier for the development team to integrate with multiple systems, their PCF workflows or their IFC upload workflows, then also they will provide it easier to users and the workflow itself will be more used. It is here very important to say that we fulfill the open CDE API standards as we do think they are critical. In some parts, we over succeed them as we do have use cases that demand more data or more information. That also means if these standards further develop, we will adapt their new approaches with it. So when it comes down to for whom this API is made, the clear answer is for developers. As you can see that there are many use cases that are behind the possibilities of our API, the complexity with it grows. That doesn't mean that we want you to discourage you starting to do your own development, but it has to be said very clear to set the expectation that this is a full-on development job making an application based on this API. Nevertheless, especially for a product owner, it's important to know what the certain APIs out there can do and which kind of standards already exist so that you don't develop a tool which then has to be redone if certain standards are grown to a market size that they are relevant or just plain necessary to communicate in the complexity of the tools coming ahead. Of course, every link mentioned uh, or website mentioned in this uh, webinar you will find in the link collection as well one towards our um, GitHub demo project, which can be copied as it's a public available project uh, to get you started on, 
our API, given that you have access to it. So far, that's everything from our side regarding the Catender API and Open Standards APIs within the building industry. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and let us know in the chat if there are any questions. I'm trying to answer them live if possible. Thank <laughs> you.